When starting a new playthrough in Bethesda's Fallout 4 role-playing game, the first place your character finds themselves is what is unofficially referred to as the House of Tomorrow. Serving as your first brief glimpse at the world before the bombs fell, this house is everything one familiar with the Fallout franchise would expect. A retro-futuristic dwelling representing the mid-20th century of the United States. But to some, this house is a lot more familiar. Let's investigate that. For those unaware, the Fallout computer game series takes place in a destroyed world, a shattered landscape. However, through examination of what was left behind, we can determine that the world that existed before the bombs fell in 2077 was basically the world that used to be depicted on the covers of old, real-world popular science and popular mechanics magazines. A world of bullet bras, carefree smoking, hairstyles that required a salon to achieve, and cars that looked like chrome rocket ships. A world where the 1950s never ended, at least not culturally or aesthetically. In Fallout 4, the game starts in this pre-cataclysmic world, giving us our first real ability to see what this world looked like right before it all ends. The direct, real-world inspiration for Fallout 4's House of Tomorrow was a prefabricated porcelain-enameled steel home manufactured by the Lustron Corporation between the years of 1947 and 1951. The company, founded by Swedish-born inventor and entrepreneur Carl Strandland, set out to satisfy a very important need America had at the time. Housing, particularly for the massive number of World War II veterans who were returning to civilian life and were eager to buy their first homes, get married, and start families. These homes were a product of another era, one that was filled with optimism and hope for the future. You see, Americans had just been through the Great Depression and World War II. The general attitude was that things could only get better going forward out of those years. This general optimism was reflected in how these homes were marketed, and is also a big visual motif for the world of the Fallout games, at least before the nuclear war turned that world into a junkyard. America was not unfamiliar with the concept of the kit home, sometimes also called the catalog home. Montgomery Ward, Sears, and the Aladdin Company had been providing such homes for decades at this point, all of which were made of wood and plaster. But what Lustron offered was something new. Manufactured in Columbus, Ohio, Lustron homes were touted as being immune to things like termites and fire, and described as resistant to age and damage, thanks to their porcelain enameled steel construction. They were advertised as the home of the future and the new standard of living. The name Lustron was derived from the word luster, which referenced the qualities of the porcelain enameled steel panels that made up the surfaces of the home. With the colored glass surface baked on, these panels never needed to be repainted, Available in four non-fading creamy colors, maize yellow, desert tan, dove gray, and surf blue, these homes had three main designs. The Newport, the Meadowbrook, and by far the most popular of the three, the Westchester. A typical Lustron home was made from 12 tons of steel and one ton of enamel and was delivered on specially designed trucks. They averaged over 3,000 individual parts, all of which were numbered, and could be assembled with just three tools using the included erection manual. These tools were a crescent wrench, a rubber mallet, and a flathead screwdriver, tools that almost all men of that era had regardless of their occupation. While a single man could probably erect one of these homes inside a week, most buyers hired a contractor to do so once they purchased the lot and had the cement foundation poured. 
In northern states like Wisconsin, several of these homes were assembled on top of cement basements instead of slabs. The Fallout 4 house shares many of the features of the Lustron houses, including the surf blue enameled steel exterior panels, brown porcelain enameled steel roof tiles, space-saving sliding steel doors, and, in particular, a very similar zigzag trellis, which, on the Fallout 4 house, supports the roof of the carport. This trellis was really the only decorative feature of the Lustron home, and it was located on the small porch. The Lustron master bedroom came with a built-in makeup station for the lady of the house, flanked by two sliding closet doors. The Lustron living room also had a built-in recessed bookshelf and mirror. The house had what we would today call an open floor plan, with no doors connecting the living room, dining area, and kitchen. The Lustron kitchen was separated from the dining area by a combination china cabinet slash kitchen cabinet that served as a divider. The cabinet also featured a heavily advertised pass-through, which gave these areas a bit of a diner or automat feel. The kitchen also featured a built-in ventilation fan that was activated by a pull chain. The Lustron boasted many innovative features and conveniences. The house originally came with most of the appliances one would need, including a rather bizarre space-saving device called the Thor Auto Magic Washing Machine slash Dish Washer, which you could use to wash both your clothes and your dishes, though not at the same time. The house did not come with a dryer because most people back then dried their clothes outside on a clothesline. However, you could put a dryer in the utility room off the kitchen, or a large freezer. Each home had a stamped serial number plate fastened to the utility room wall. While the Lustron lacked a specific style and was architecturally rather plain, it did scream modernity. This house was visually all about the materials used to build it. Over time, the flaws in the house's construction and design would become apparent. If you wanted to hang pictures on the steel wall interiors, you usually had to use powerful magnets, which were hard to obtain. While being able to clean your house's exterior with a hose was easy, it also meant you were kind of stuck with the colors you initially chose. The heating element that came with the house was a ceiling-mounted radiant heat system, which any high school student can tell you wouldn't work very well since, well, heat rises. The house didn't come with a furnace and had no forced air system, so this was a problem in places that had cold winters. The windows were all aluminum frames, which meant they could only support smaller window unit air conditioners. There isn't a single home anywhere that doesn't have flaws, so why did the Lustron Corporation only make these homes for three years? Several factors combined to lead to the demise of the Lustron Corporation. These were intended to be low-cost, starter homes for returning World War II veterans, but the fact that you still had to buy the lot or the slab or basement and pay to have the house connected to local utilities made it more expensive than just the listed price. Lustron could never give someone an accurate estimate and that hurt business. Also, even though the porcelain enamel protected the steel components of the house from the elements, if that enamel ever failed, perhaps due to a hailstorm or reckless neighborhood kids throwing rocks or something, that was it you'd have to replace that panel or part before the rust would spread. These homes would have been most ideal in the arid southwest of the United States, but since they had to be delivered on trucks, they never were erected west of the Rockies due to the transportation costs. The interior enamel was also different than the external enamel and could wear and tear much easier, exposing the steel and subjecting it to corrosion. Today, many of the surviving Lustron homes have this problem to varying degrees. Indeed, this is something that they also share with their Fallout 4 counterparts. Today, there are fewer than 2,300 Lustron homes still in existence, and many have, despite the difficulty in doing so, been modified from their original condition. 
around 50 of these homes have been registered uh, as historical sites. The Lustron became a brief historical architectural footnote of the 20th century. Much like the Tucker Torpedo, it was a brief brainchild of an innovative man that couldn't survive the rigors of reality and the competition the free market thrives upon. But the Lustron's influence is still felt in many places, including Fallout 4, a game where you can spend hours restoring, to the best of your ability, a whole neighborhood of Lustron-inspired homes, with your trusty Mr. Handy household robot assisting you. Thank you for watching.